And with this, you should get the desired results, except it won't sound perfect because we haven't actually changed the settings. So let's test that out real quick. Oh, I didn't actually attach a... Uh, there we go. Now they're all attached to the speaker. As you can see, it, it sounded really terrible. Now the first thing you notice is that it played the white noise constantly. And to fix that, we can just go to the delay. So uh, that white noise shouldn't come too frequently. So why don't we make it that it has a minimum of four seconds and a maximum of 10 second delay. So let's try that. Much better, but let's, uh, let's have try to change the white noise because that's really irritating to me at this point. Let's go modulator. Now the first thing I think is wrong is the volume. So why don't we make the max volume at only 0.5. So it's half of uh, its current max volume. And it's minimum volume, let's make it 0.01, something very low. So sometimes it's, you can just barely hear it. Uh, and the pitch, let's lower the pitch too, because lower pitches tend to be more soothing. So we'll make this 0.9 and this 0.2. So it's not as low as the volume. Looping, looping is pretty much just saying you have the ability to loop it indefinitely or not. And if you choose not to loop it indefinitely, then you can change it with these numbers. We'll keep that the way it is. Uh, same with this thing over here. Uh, let's see, you go to the mixer. The mixer allows you to change the individual volume outputs for each thing. We're, we're already changing the volume output for the white noise, so we don't need to change it any further. And attenuation, um, well, we really don't know how far it's going to be, so we'll just keep it at these stats for now, and we can change them any time during the program. And once again, you have a low-pass filter just like before. So you're, you're going to notice it's a lot like the properties for a sound node wave, but you get a lot more control over the customization. So now if you play it... So you see that white noise, it sounds different, but it's just the same white noise over and over again. Not the best work, but for a short amount of time, that's a lot of customization. So uh, we'll leave that for now, we'll close that. Now we need to, of course, add this to our world. So why don't we go to our test package, we'll find the sound cue, we'll delete our filter. Here we go, here we have the radio. So we click that and we have it selected, and yes, just like before, close this. It's exactly like before, so once I go into the world, right click and add actor. Now for radio, for uh, sound cues, you don't get as many options. You can only make add ambient sounds, which is essentially the same as adding an ambient sound simple, or add ambient sound movable, which makes it, it's a sound that can be tracked onto an object that will follow that object. So uh, if you have maybe like a train moving by and you want a whistle going off, this is what you use. But because this is just going to be a stationary object, you're going to use uh, ambient sound. Just, you're going to use it most of the time. So just click that. So here we go. And once again, you see these rings that I was talking about. Here's the small ring. And it's considerably smaller because we made that at uh, only 4,000. So why don't we move this centered a little more. So it's right in front of the boombox, and you're only going to hear it at 100% when you get this close to it. As if you can see, the, just this inner ring that you see on screen, that's as close as you'll be able to hear it at 100%. And if you notice, as I get farther away, it's going to get quieter and quieter. But frankly, I think it's a little too loud right now. But uh, here's another thing that we can talk about. We can talk about something called ambient zones. Normally when you have a big building with a lot of connecting doors, you're not going to be able to hear sounds through walls. So there is a way to prevent that, and that's with something called ambient zone. 